Hi, and welcome to C++ for Microcontrollers. My name is Mikey, this is my lab, and today we are doing the introduction to what we plan to cover, why this course exists, who am I, who are you, what will you be able to take away from this, and what will we be using uh, as our learning material going forward. Now, the next video is gonna be the, the setting up of our actual tool chain, but this one I just wanted to, to sit down, tell you who I am, why I have any authority to say what I'm what I'm about to teach you and why you might want to learn it. So, as I said, my name is Mikey. I've been working in the software engineering field for about 20 years at this point, but more importantly, I'm a maker. I love building things. About 10 years ago, I started to get into the electronic side of things as well, and I quickly found that while there's a lot out there to help people um, work with microcontrollers and work with electronics, most of the people who have written them are not software engineers. And I don't hold this against people in any way. Uh, their knowledge of software engineering is very similar to my knowledge of electronics. I would not even dream of trying to teach a course in electronics engineering. But programming? I know programming. So that's who I am. Um, but who are you? And the answer to that is going to vary a lot. Some of you are going to be people who uh, have never built anything, have never programmed before, and have stumbled across something called Arduino and thought that this would be neat. Um, and we're going to work with that. We're going to start from the, the very basics of where you haven't programmed before, you don't have a whole lot of programming knowledge behind you, and we are going to build you up. Uh, some of you are lifelong programmers that have programmed for years, and this is the first instance that you found of a course that will teach you the differences in C++ when you're dealing with a microcontroller. Because there's a lot that's slightly different and almost every other course ignores it. Uh, things like bitwise operations, uh, understanding memory, the, st the stack and the heap, and dynamic memory and why you should avoid using it and why deterministic is much better in a memory confined, a, a memory constrained environment. And if these terms make no sense to you, don't worry. They will by the time you're done this course. So what we are going to be using uh, as a basis for programming with regards to microcontrollers is an Arduino. Um, particularly, we're gonna primarily be using this one, which is a Pro Mini. It's very easy to set up, it's very easy to work with, but Arduinos come in a lot of different flavors. This is the full original board that I got. I can't even remember how many years ago I got this. Um, then you've got like the, the TT Go, which has the LoRa capabilities and like long range radio abilities inside of it. And then you've got things like ESP8266 and ESP32s. These are 80 megahertz processors, uh, some with multiple cores that are programmed with the Arduino suite as well. So we have a wide range of microcontrollers available to us when we know how to work with Arduino. Uh, we will not be using the Arduino IDE. Uh, the Arduino IDE, I find, gets in the way. There's a lot of restrictions that it puts in place that don't need to be there. And if you use the tool chain that I'm going to show you, you kind of unlock it. Now, you don't have to use the tool chain I'm, I'm using. You can use any tool chain you want, even down to Notepad or Nano or Vi if you're a Linux person. You can literally code this anywhere. The actual compiler is AVRGCC, which is the same one that's used in Arduino. Uh, we are going to use Visual Studio Community and with a plugin called Visual Micro. Um, links to these will all be provided in the, next, in the next video as we set all of this up from scratch. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, don't stress, don't worry, that's the next video's problem. What I'm hoping that you get to take away from this course is a better understanding of C++ in general, right? Um, being able to code in C++ for full, uh, full PC development as well and understanding the basics and the intermediate level of C++ I think will be a takeaway that comes from this. Now, one of the flip sides is you're also gonna walk away with a deeper understanding of what changes when you're about to use a microcontroller or when you're about to enter a world where your processor is only 16 megahertz and you've only got 32K of program memory. 
Um, what changes? How do you deal with that? Um, we're going to talk a lot about things like libraries and being able to use those to talk to things. I'm a big believer that you can use a library once you've used that piece of hardware without a library already because black boxes are bad. So we will we'll dive in and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where all of this goes. I'm, we're going to start off with a couple of really high level videos unfortunately because there's some information that I just need to get out of the way. Um, it's not going to be, I hope it's not like drinking from a fire hose, but I need to talk to you and I need you to understand the process of how software is built in that when you click build and it starts to compile, what is actually happening. Uh, from there, we're going to take a look at some memory structures and processor structures just so that we have a base understanding of where we're going. This will be a really high level, just shoot right over. And then we'll start getting into the nitty gritty of the actual programming in the actual language. I think at the end of the day, the information that we're going to provide in this course will be very beneficial. Um, I hope it will fill some of the gaps that some of the tutorials, well, as well-meaning as they are, um, are missing because they don't have the background of a software engineer. Um, I hope we can fill some of those gaps. I hope I can show you how to bring proper coding style and structures and contracts and interfaces and object uh, objects into your uh, microcontroller development in a way that makes it easier to maintain. And that's a big one. Um, these Arduinos, well, yes, they're on my board as little modules here, but they're almost everywhere around you. Almost everything that you are within 10 feet of has a microcontroller of some type in it. And knowing how to program them and knowing how they work is very important. It's a very good skill to, to definitely have as a maker. It's a definitely a good skill to have as a person. And in the event of a zombie apocalypse, being able to build stuff, vitally important. So hopefully that I can add some, uh, some knowledge in these areas to you and add some value. Uh, if there's any questions, any comments, any topics you definitely want me to cover that you haven't seen in the list of videos already, comments down below. Love to hear from you guys. Um, in the meantime, I want to thank you for joining me in the lab today. I hope you learned something. And we will speak again soon.